for watching. If you haven't seen my videos before, my name is Andrew Kopak and I do construction and design. I'm here to show you how to build some awesome projects. Now if you haven't noticed, fall is here and leaves are everywhere. So why not let the awesome, unique leaves and pattern affect the next project. Now the next project that I'm going to be showing you how to do step by step through the design and through the build phase is a unique rustic nightstand for your home or for your friends. Now this is going to be built out of pine and also have a concrete top to it. Now we're going to use these leaves or any pattern that you like from the outside nature and incorporate it into the countertop. It's a very easy project and it's very cost efficient. Now if you noticed here, I have a bunch of tools, but you don't need a bunch of tools to go ahead with this project. It's very simple to do and I know that if I can do it, so can you. So get excited for this next project, it's going to be awesome and I know that you're going to have a blast doing it. So let's get started. All right, so for many of you, this might be your first time on the computer doing design work that relates to carpentry or even anything, but don't worry, it's very quick and very simple. And I'm here to show you how to do it step by step. So right now we're going to be using Google SketchUp, which you can download the free version for this case. And I'm going to show you on my computer how you can use it to design this project. In this case, we're going to see how it actually looks before we build it, saving us time and saving us money. On top of that, we can also see how much materials we need so that we can go to the store all we have to do is take one trip and we'll have everything. So let's All right, so if you've used this before, maybe you can follow along with me. But if you haven't, check out my other videos and tutorials on how to use SketchUp because it really gives you an understanding of how to use this. I'm going to do this very quick just to show you how to use it and just how we get the design. And from there, the build part of this, I'll go a lot slow. So when you first open SketchUp, you'll just have a blank canvas like this. And let's say the top, we're just going to improvise here, let's say is a 16 by 16. So now we have the top right there. And we know that the concrete top in which we're going to be using is an inch thick, so we're going to make that an inch thick. Um, you could do color if you want to, so in this case, uh, we'll just make it gray. And this is the part right here that's going to have imprints of the nature and anything that you find outside. So that'll be along the top, so it'll not just be a simple square like this. It'll be a lot nicer and a lot more rustic. And if you use concrete, then this will have a very rustic feel because the difference between concrete and cement is that there's aggregates, which are like rocks or just something bigger. And I've done that before and it makes it look a lot more natural because you don't want this looking perfect and like very crisp. So once we do that, um, you can just flip it over and let's see, uh, in the corners, we're just going to deal with the three quarter inch pine. So let's say if we double that, um, it'll be an inch and a half. So when we glue two of them together, it'll be an inch and a half by an inch and a half. So those will be how big our legs are. So we'll make that a component. And if we drag that to each section, then it'll make sure that they're unique. Um, but in this case, we're actually just going to make one side at a time and duplicate that onto the other side. And then uh, whatever we do on one side, we'll go to the other side. So we'll slide these components over here. So now if I drag these down, let's see, um, I'm not too sure for the height yet, but let's say we like 24 inches. And that'll be obviously plus the one inch for the countertop. And the countertop, we actually want to overhang a little bit, probably like an inch or so. So we'll just offset this by like an inch. And uh, we'll drag this down an inch right here. And then uh, that'll give us a nice like overlap around all of the sides. Now, if you don't want to overlap on the back, you know, that's okay. You can just move it if you want to. Um, in this case, we're just gonna make it equal all around. So we'll make this all one color just to show a little easier. So now we have the top right there and the legs. Um, you delete these lines if they're uh, messing up over here. And now for the left side right here, we're just going to do a simple little arch on the bottom of this. So let's say uh, we're going to go up maybe like an inch from the bottom and then from there we'll have a three inch rip of wood. So we'll make a rectangle with that which would also be three quarters of an inch thick. And we can offset this, uh, actually if we just offset everything in like a half an inch, I think that will give a nice look and also, uh, you know, a little bit less reveal on the inside, which will look very nice. So from this, we're going to arch it over. Instead of doing an arch from both endpoints, uh, let's go an inch in from each side, maybe even two just to give a different look. So using guidelines right there, the arc tool. And we'll go about an inch and then uh, we'll get rid of this. So now we have that bottom there. Get rid of the guides. Uh, make sure to save this. If you've never done this before, you want to always make sure to save it. 
So we'll just save this as a, I don't know, just anything, you know, just to save it quick. Doesn't really matter right now. And now the top part, we're going to basically doing the same thing, but I think instead of doing the arc, we'll just uh, keep it just flat to make it a little more simple up here. So, let's see, we'll make this guy a group right here. And uh, this one, we'll just make, uh, let's see, two inches. And that'll be in line with the top right there. Again, 0.75 for thickness. Make it a group and we'll move it in half an inch. Now from there, we're going to want to have little spindles here, at least in my case. Um, so we'll do 0.75, kind of 0.75, so we'll have a nice little square right there. We'll make that a group, make it a component. And let's see, this little trick right here that I showed in the last video is if you move them each to the ends and you do the divide, which is like the backslash tool, uh, two or whatever number, you know, it kind of splits it up so you can see exactly like how many you want here. So let's see if we do something like that. We could get rid of those two. And we could just extrude these guys right up the top, right there. Um, and you know, that gives a nice little look and that's basically what we're going to be doing, but to make it look more rustic instead of modern, we're gonna take the sander to it and just do different techniques to make it look rustic and blend in with the top right here. So now to make this go on the other side, which I didn't do by accident, to so copy all of them, delete them, open up this component, paste in place, and now you have them on both sides. Um, this top right here will just be liquid nails. Uh, you know, you use a tube of that to just adhere it to the top, which works great, I've done it before. Last time I didn't enforce the concrete countertop, we'll go over that after. Uh, I'm not sure if you have to because it's so small, but we'll try different techniques and see what works. And also for the bottom here, since it's not open, we're gonna be doing the same thing. Uh, we don't want it flush with the top of this area right here. So let's go down uh, half an inch to give us that reveal, and then an inch for the countertop. And then from there, whatever space we have left over, half an inch, we'll do a rip right there that's a half inch long. And let's see, we'll make this, uh, we're gonna want like a little slat here just to have the concrete sit on top of. It doesn't have to be that big, so just like that, let's see, um, if we rip it to a half an inch, it'll be three quarters of an inch wide, which should be fine. So that'll sit right on top of there, so we'll make that a group, and it's probably not on the other side. So we'll just get rid of the guides, open this back up, paste in place. And now you notice it's on the outside here, so I'm going to flip it along so that it basically mirrors the image, and now we have them on the same side, just like we wanted. So now this one is going to basically sit on top of here, just like the top one. It's going to be an inch high, make that a group. And we'll add some color to that. And to this, we'll add some color also just to, uh, you know, kind of show you how it's going to look. Let's see. So basically, we're going to make something like that and see how quick that was. So now we we know what we need. Um, bags of concrete basically only come in a few sizes. So you can get the smallest bag available. Um, I know there's 60 pound, 80 pound, there might even be a 30 pound. So if they have a 30 pound, that'll be fine. So right now we have one bag of concrete. And then also for the side piece right here, um, let's see what we need. Basically, we could put all these parts together and just kind of estimate like what we need. So in this case, we're going to make a rectangle. Let's just say uh, we're going to get a one by 12 in pine by six feet long, maybe that'll work. So we did, uh, 11, actually we'll use the guide right here. We'll do 11 and three quarters and that's going to be six feet tall. So now we have that uh, board right here that we're going to have. So we can trace over that. And then we have uh, basically what we want to work with here. And I messed that up, but it's on six feet by... See, sometimes it does that. Um, so you just have to get used to the program and stuff. Sometimes you mess up, even me, every once in a while. So we do six feet, comma, 21.75. And now we have that board that we want. We'll make that three quarters of an inch thick. So now we know that that's the board that we're dealing with and that's how much material we have. So now from there, what you could do and what I usually do is just paste all of these different things, rotate them so that you know exactly um, how you want them to sit on here. So you can move this uh, wherever you want. In this case, just move it to the corner just so it's easy to work with. It's right there. And we're just going to paste these on here. So copy them. 
um, you can paste it, and in this case, you're just going to want to rotate it 90 degrees. And you could sit this in the corner right there, and now you know that it can't go that way, so we're going to rotate, pivot it on this corner 90 degrees, and then move that over since it's overlapping. So we know there's one, and we have two of these, so we'll make the other one right there. Um, you could take account into like the curve, which is the saw blade cut, so in that case, um, when you move it over, instead of just going the three inches, you do like 3.2. And then you have that uh, curve, which is the blade cut right there. And if you're doing a larger scale project, that's definitely something you should be doing. So from there, we'll also have the legs, which are basically this shape right here. So we're only going to get one of the faces, not the whole thing, because of the thickness. So we're going to do that, and again, you could rotate it against something else. 90 degrees, find out where that guy went, and... So we're going to paste that on here, do it over here, and that will be three quarters of an inch thick. Which you don't have to do the thickness right there, it doesn't really matter. Or the color, but just to show you, you know, it's a little simpler. So now, that's half of one leg, and that's the other half of the other leg. And we're going to do two, four, six, eight of them total. And you can see that just about fits, but with the kerf, it's not going to, so... Just to make it easier, you know, we could split them up. We could actually move these three guys down to the other side, just so we get a very close material estimate estimation. And then you can move these. Move these up a little bit. Just about, about like two inches right about there. You know that this one has to go up here. And then also for these guys, we'll do the same thing. So... In this case, you can actually just select the face or the whole thing, whatever you want. And we'll do the same thing, we'll paste these on here. And these, doesn't really matter where you put them. Let's see how many we need, I think it's four on each side. Five on each side, so we'll need ten of these total. So you can use the move tool with the alt key, and you can put it right there, times ten. 11 there, so we got rid of one. And, you know, with the curve and everything, it'll kind of even out, so that'll basically fit there. But as you can see already, we know that this is all going to fit on here without a doubt. And they sell them in 8 footers, so we definitely don't need an 8 footer. And we know, just right off the bat, that a 6 footer is more than enough material as long as you cut it right. Now, the only thing with doing that is that if you cut it wrong, there are ways to do it where you can mess up the material. So in this case, if you just cut this board, like, right across the section through half of it, you're not going to have enough. So you really have to plan out like where you're going to cut everything. So in that case, you really want the edges to line up with each other when you make uh, like cross cuts, basically. So in this case, try to make everything one cut align. So you could see like right there, that one rip that you're going to be doing right across there, that lines up with everything. And if you do it here, then it's going to mess up and you're not going to have enough for those. So let's see, we can move two of these over here. And you just kind of simplify it, and this is something you don't have to do, but it uh, gives you the overall concept of, uh, you know, how long you want to cut everything. Just to make it easier, save on uh, money so that you're not messing up the material. So we could put that right there, and we'll just slide all these guys down. Right there, so you know, uh, you know, once you make the first rip or whatever, just where to uh, cut them. And you can see that kind of moved over the wrong way, so just make sure it's all aligned right. And then we also have the two top pieces and the slats. So we'll put those on really quick. And those are going to... It stops freezing up. Those are just going to go right next to these guys right here. Um, so we'll do this, let's see, 90 degrees this way. And also this way. And we have two of these right here. So I'll move that one into the corner right there. And we'll also move that one right there. And then uh, the little two slats underneath right there. You can just copy and paste, do the same thing. And we'll, uh, we could put them in there, but why not just put them across here? They're not gonna fit there actually. So we'll have to put them back here. So we'll rotate those 90 degrees and we'll put those in line with these and we'll make two of them 
So now you have your board with everything that you need there. So we'll make this whole thing a group. So now you can move this over here. We'll make this thing a group right here. And basically if you go to the top view, which is the one up here, and then you go to view, or actually camera, parallel projection, you can switch this up, you know, you can see that one board right there, how everything fits. So that's your cut list, and you can also take it into layout, which I use to, uh, you know, show you like measurements and print it out to scale. And that's something that I'll upload for you guys, so you don't have to do it, but it's just something to play around with. So that's how we do the design, and that's how you get this uh, cabinet, actually not cabinet, but this nightstand. So now we're going to go buy everything. So right now we can see that the materials that we're going to be using is a bag of concrete, um, 12 or 1 by 12 by 6 pine. Also for screws, for fastening, that's something that I didn't show on here, which I usually would. So for fastening these two there, what I did last time is add a dowel, just kind of uh, drill a hole into here, and then drill a hole into there. And it's okay that it's not off-center because we want it to look rustic in this case. So it'll actually add a nice touch to this. And these right here, we use uh, pocket hole screws to go into there, which I'll show you. Uh, liquid nails, so now that we know what we need, you know, I'll write it out so you guys can see what you need and we'll go buy everything. Right, so how simple is that to design your project on a computer? Now, I've included a link that's right here, which shows you all the materials that I'll be buying for this project, and also the layout of the whole project so that you can follow it if you haven't done the design by yourself. Now, this design, it saves a lot of money to do it beforehand on a computer or even by hand. So, it eliminates runs back and forth to the Home Depot, which if you've ever done a do-it-yourself project, you know that that's the worst thing when you're trying to do something and you can't because you don't have the right materials or you don't have enough. And we might even have materials laying around for this project, which are okay, and you can use those too. Now the best part about this is that it's rustic and my project versus your projects will never be the same. And that's part of the natural beauty of the wilderness in which we're trying to replicate. So let's get started, let's go buy those materials, and I'll see you soon in the shop. All right, so right now I'm on the way back from the Home Depot, which I just got all the materials that are necessary for this project. Uh, it was under 40 bucks, and time frame, let's say two days. So it's a very easy project, very quick, and very cost effective. And just wait until you see how it's going to look. It's an awesome project, very rustic, yet very modern in a way. So you can put it anywhere in your house, and for materials, this right here is a pine board. It's a one by 12 by six. So it's very easy to fit in your car, no matter what you have. Obviously I have a very small car and I fit it in here. So I have confidence that you can too. And also, uh, usually when you're selecting pine boards like that, you don't want the knots in there because they decrease the strength of it. And also it's not a very clean look for people to go after. So what I did here is I found, I didn't mean to, I actually almost put this one back, but then I realized like the potential that it has um, it's just, it's great. The knots that are in there and the pattern that it has, it's something that you don't see every day. And it's going to turn this project from something simple that you normally see into something that's just different from the rest. Also for stain, I got a dark type of stain. Uh, I got a bag of concrete. I got some quarter inch doll pins. Uh, they were in the back section of Home Depot. They're like an inch or so thick. And those will come in handy when we're doing the slats on the sides. Uh, basically drill a hole in like the bottom part on the side and then into like little dolls in a way. And that'll be very simple just to glue them and put the sides together. Also, I got uh, some liquid nails, which will come in handy when we're putting the top, the concrete top onto like the side pieces. Um, and I think that's all. It was under 40 bucks, like I said. So we're gonna go to my shop right now and get started. So I'll see you soon. All right, welcome back to this shop. We're gonna get started. So this right here is a quarter inch board I explained. You can get it in a bigger sheet or I just got this because it fit in my car easier. So since we know that the top concrete um, part of this furniture item is going to be 16 inches by 16 inches. We're going to rip a square and make that 20 inches by 20 inches so that we have room to work around the base. So we'll do that and we'll also rip some one inch cleats so that we could uh, basically make the, the form for this concrete. So let's go do that and I'll see you in a bit. All right, so right now we should have this one board which is about 20 inches by 20 inches. And also, have four one inch rips. Now these are going to be for the thickness of the concrete which we're pouring. And also what I did since I had extra material on the board is I just ripped these to about two inches. So these will be like a backer for these. So we'll nail this down and then put this alongside of it. So we'll get something looking like that. In this case, this will be the inside. So now we're going to just nail all these together. Don't put too many nails in here because anything that you put in there will be shown afterwards. So try to just put a few fish nails, if anything, through here, or even better, just put some glue on the back side and let it dry. All right, so I just made the form for the concrete. Now the inside of this is 16 inches by 16 inches. Now to do that, 
I screwed in the MDF or any cleats that you have with one inch drywall screws right there as you can see and then from the inside right there I added finish nails. I added just about two of them. So now we have this solid base right here where we're going to cast some concrete. Okay, so when you have all of your forms laid out as you see here, what we're going to do is pour the concrete on. All right, so as you can see, I just poured the countertop section for my project. And what we did is before we actually put the leaves or anything in that we wanted imprinted on the concrete, is we put some kind of oil down. Now you could use cooking spray, spray it very well. You could use canola oil, put it on a paper towel and just kind of rub it around or a sponge or something. In my case, I didn't have anything besides sticks of butter, so I figured that's used for cooking to uh, grease stuff, so I figured that will work too, so we'll see how it works. And when you go to add leaves, pick a nice collection of leaves. I think I put around like five of them in there, so it's not too crowded, but it's up to you. Whatever design you want, you can do. You can even put them overlapping the edge in the corner if you want to, but I wouldn't really recommend that. So there's two sides to leaves, and one side has more texture to it. So if you want that texture, keep in mind that the bottom of this base is actually the top of it. So if you want this pattern, put it face so that the pattern is facing up and the smooth part is down. In that case, when you pour the concrete over it, it'll form to the veins or whatever are on the item that you're putting on there. In this case, the leaf. So when you pour it, it should be something like a milkshake. You don't want it too thin and you don't want it too thick where it's clumpy. And once you pour it, it's okay. It's not going to even out right away. So in that case, you have to do something that they do when they're building homes. Now when they pour the foundation into a house, it doesn't all level out and have no air bubbles. What they do is they add like vibrations to it and shake it around, and that's exactly what we're doing here. It'll make sure that it sits in the corners properly and also gets rid of air bubbles. So I did it before, but basically I just kind of shake it around like that. Not too much so it doesn't spill out, but uh, make sure that it gets all even. And you can even use your hand if you want to. Just make sure to wash your hands quickly afterwards because this can cause burns. So once we have that, we're going to let it sit here for at least 24 hours. Now if you take it out or even move it before it's dry and it gets even a hairline crack, it's going to mess up your whole project and you'll have to do it over again. Which isn't a big deal because the bag of concrete was only about 4 or $5, so it's a learning experience just like anything else. So if you mess up the first one, it's not a big deal. I've done that many times before. So just make sure to let it sit and dry at least what it recommends, or in my case at least 24 hours to be sure that it's all there. Even when the outside looks hard, the inside is very delicate. And since this is only an inch thick, it's really cutting it close to the strength of what it needs to really hold its form. But while this is drying, we're going to put it aside and we're going to make the rest of this. Now the rest of this is out of that one six foot pine board and that will be very quick to make. So we'll throw some stain on it. And then by the time the stain is dried on that, this hopefully will be dry and we can throw them together. So like I said before, it really is a two day project. This concrete is really making it the extra day because we have to wait for it to cure. So let's get started on that, put this aside, and let's get this project done. All right, so now it's time to start building with the pine board that we bought. Now in this case, if you're looking at your screen right now, you'll notice that there's some red dashed lines. Now those are going to be where we cross cut this. And the reason being is that when we designed this, we only allocated for this much material. So if you just cut it at random length, it's not going to fit everything that you need. So the first two cross cuts that we're going to do are 24 inches wide. So like always, safety glasses and ear protection is a must. So we'll get two of those cuts, 24 inches wide, and move on to the next step. Now, if you haven't noticed already, this stuff smells amazing. It smells like you're at a Christmas tree farm. And I love the smell. It's a lot neater than MDF, and it makes your shop smell amazing. I love when you walk into the wood shop and it just smells like oak or pine or something. It's a great smell, and if you enjoy woodworking, that's just one of the many things that you'll enjoy. So now that we have these two pieces, we're going to look at the drawing and see what else we do. Okay, so if you look at our drawing, you're going to see that we're ripping six inch and a half pieces on the first board, and then the other two on the next one. So make sure to set your blade height to just about a quarter inch above the three quarter inch material, just to make sure you don't cut your fingers off. Okay, so now that you have all these pieces ripped, we're going to glue them together. Now pay attention to the knots, make sure you want the, kind of play around with them. If you want this knot on the outside, then put the glue on the other side. Um, and when we put the glue on, what I'm doing is I'm putting one line across and I'm doing a zigzag form going across just to make sure that there's enough glue. We don't want to put too much, but it's okay if it leaks out because it's better to have a little bit more just to hold it together than anything. So we'll sand cheese together and then once we have the whole set glued like I just did, you can lay them down. In this case, right here, make sure they're all flat and that the ends are lined up for most case and we're going to clamp these together. Okay, so now 
now we should have all of these pieces cut that we need. So follow the diagram that I added um, to the link below, which is right down here. And you can download a PDF, if you haven't designed it yourself, of what materials and how to cut, basically like the cut sheet. So in this case, we have these three quarters of an inch by three quarters of an inch dowels for the side. And each one has five, so we have two sets of five in total, 10 of these. So here's five for one set, here's another five for the second set. Also, we need the top and the bottom for those. So in this case, we have these, which are two inches wide, and we have these, which are three inches wide. So again, three, two of the three inch wide ones, and two of the two inch wide ones. So basically, to make a set, we have the bottom piece, all these dolls right here, and then the top piece. So we're going to put these together, but first we have to make the arc on these pieces right here. So to do this, it's pretty simple. What you could do is use string and a pencil, and you attach the pencil to the string, um, and you kind of just go around in a circle, and it makes that. So to make the arc, like I was showing you, is we want it to measure in two inches on each side, just like the drawing. So we'll go ahead and do that first. So just two inches and make a mark, and then from here we'll do the same thing. And now you know that you want that arc to go all the way up here and to there. But to make it even, there's a little technique. And I didn't have any string near me, so what you could do is I use the Home Depot bag right here. Kind of position it, and you can see kind of where it lines up with both of them. So kind of position it, moving it like away until it uh, seems like it goes to both ends evenly. And then once you have that, you can kind of slowly just like sketch around it. and. Now you have that right there. Okay, so now that we have that, we're going to get this cut with the jigsaw. In my case, I built up a little platform uh, so that the blade won't hit the table because it's kind of hard with this length to kind of cut right here unless you have something very solid like a workbench. So I'm gonna put this right on top and just go around. And then from there, we're gonna do the same thing to the other one and then put them both on the sander together to make them nice and symmetrical. <laughs> together really quick. We have the two side pieces right here. So right now we're going to kind of hold them together and we're going to go to this sander over here. And this is an awesome tool I'm going to show you. All right, so instead of sanding these by hand to get them perfect, even though they came out really nice with that jigsaw, which I'm actually surprised, that's uh, one of the first time making arcs like that with a rigid jigsaw and they came out great. But we're going to put these on the sander right here. But this one's made, it's like a belt sander on the side. But the other feature of this is that it's a spindle sander. So we're going to switch this out, I'll show you how quick and how easy it is. So this unscrews right here. And this comes right out. When you reach over to the back, you get this piece right here, which is a cover that goes on there. From that, you select which size you want. There's five different sizes. Put that right on top. Find the O-ring that covers it, that goes on the base. And then from there, you put the washer on top, and you tighten this. Now when you tighten it, it actually compresses it enough where it kind of uh, bows out like the rubber piece beneath the sand's paper. So in that case, the sandpaper doesn't move when it's turning on. So how quick was that? That was less than 30 seconds to change it from the belt sander to the spindle sander. I love this tool so much, and just wait until you see what it does to these to make them look perfect. Right, so we'll turn this on and we'll get these sanded. See how quiet that is? You can't even tell that it's on. So hold these flush together. If you don't have one of these, you don't need one. All you have to do is sand it by hand. All right, how quick was that? So now we have these two pieces. And now, let's start to get it assembled. Okay, so now that we have all those set, we're going to look on the drawing, or even basically just do the math in your head if you want to. So these are all going to be evenly spaced, and we're going to line those up just like I did here, and draw a mark from the center of this to where it lines up on here. So in this case, you should have five marks on here going down. And it's just letting you know that when you drill, that that is in line with this piece right here, and they're all even. So once you have this one marked out, you could do the same thing on this piece. So just butt them up against each other like that and connect the lines. So in this case, you should have something that looks like that. So that means that those are where the dolls are going to go. So we're going to drill holes in the center of this board, in the center of this, where each one of those occur. 
also, we're going to drill a hole in the center of these. Now it doesn't have to be perfect because we're making this look rustic and we want it to look like, not like it was thrown together, but kind of something natural. So don't go too crazy getting it very precise. We're going to use a quarter inch drill bit and we're going to use these dowel pins that we bought, which come in a case like this. And they're these right here. So make sure you go in deep enough. What you can do is find just over half of this where it lines up on your drill and put a piece of tape around it. That way when the tape, as the drill bit's actually going in, you'll see when the tape is actually butted against that and you'll know, kind of like to gauge it where you want it to stop. So we're going to drill all of these and then they'll slide right into here. Okay, so as you're drilling those in, you'll notice that they fit right in just like that. So you put them on each side and then once you have all of the holes drilled, you could do a dry fit, which is just without glue, making sure that everything fits and that all the holes are deep enough. Now if you go too far, you'll notice that the peg won't stick out enough to grab the other one. So you don't want to go too far because then when you glue it, the actual dowel isn't going to be through both pieces, so it won't hold it. But when you have all them in, you'll notice you kind of twist a little bit because it's not glued yet. But it should look something like this. So now you have the bottom piece right here, and you can adjust these whatever way you want when you glue them. If you don't want them straight, I mean, you could angle them kind of like 45, which actually looks really nice. It's different from the design. And I think that's what I'm going to do. Just kind of have them on an angle. And then when we sand them, we're going to do something crazy with the sander. We're going to use the belt sander and just like different things. We're going to like diagonal and just like do everything against how you're supposed to do it. So usually you're supposed to go with the grain, but we want to make it look rustic and we kind of want saw cuts and stuff to be on there. So we're going to go crazy and it's going to look awesome. So I'll show you a little closer view right here. As you can see, this is the one that we used before that has the lines on it. So let's take this to each piece, make the lines go right across. They don't have to be perfect because that's not what we're going for here. Let's do the same thing to this piece right here. Make them line up. Put this piece aside, you can see that the holes are all in there. And when you go through a knot like that, go on slow seed because it'll, uh, It'll either break or it'll kind of skip and go into your hand and you don't want that. So now we're going to just take the drill to these. When you drill it, don't put your hand right here because it'll go through if it slips, it'll go right into your hand. So kind of hold it here if you're drilling in here or you can even go downward like this. Just go about that much. And kind of tap to get the sawdust out and do that to each and every one of these. Okay, so now that these are all drilled, we're going to do what I said before, and we're going to put glue in the hole first. So let's say take these two pieces, put glue on these, and then we'll do these next, or whatever way you want to do it. Just put a dab, you don't need too much. And you kind of want to get it on the edge of it because you don't want it just to fall down to the bottom and not uh, grasp the doll when you put it in. Just kind of move it to the side and we'll angle it, whatever you need to get it on the side of the hole. Again, it's okay if it leaks out a little bit. And we'll do the same thing to the this piece right here. Now in my case, like I said, I'm going to rotate these all kind of like 45 degrees just because I think that's a really cool look, you know, it's something different. And I'm going to clamp this together right now. So in this case, um, you know, wherever you think like the pressure points are to clamp them, kind of depends on, you know, like how big the arc is and all that stuff. So start one end a little bit before you do it all the way because then it will kind of do this one too tight and then that one will be different. And you see we have this and this is clamped just the way that we want it. We can actually rotate it a little bit more right now if we want to to uh, basically just get it before it dries. So we'll put those all like that. Look what we have. We have the side piece. And then also the legs are just gonna be right attached on here. But we do these first, and then uh, we'll just screw right into there, which will be very simple. I'll show you how to do that. So let's put this one aside and let's do the same process. Here we have our two side pieces drying with the clamps. We have the concrete over here, and right here we have the legs. Right, so once everything is dry, you can start to take it apart. Now these are the legs right here. These dry pretty quick, actually. So we're gonna take the clamps off and make them all even with each other. So now as you can see, we have four of these. And you might notice that the edge where they're joining, they're not always the right size. You know, in some areas, if your table saw is off, or if you're off, or just if they got glued 
um, and clamps to a point where they like moved a little bit. So we're going to take these to the belt sander, which I have over there, um, like the table machine. You can actually use a regular belt sander if you want to, but I like that one a lot better for something like this. And we're going to make these all even so that they're perfect square on each side. All right, so this time we're going to switch this over from the dowel, or the spindle sander actually, to the more of like the table belt sander. I'll show you how quick it is yet again. This comes right off. The washers sit in here. It's a nice spot for them. A little o-ring comes off. It's a nice spot for that also. This goes in the back in place of this. And it sits right on top. Kind of spin it to let it fall into place. You put this screw back on. It's actually reverse threaded so that it doesn't come undone when you're sanding. Screw that in, nice and tight. How simple is that? Now we have the belt sander right here. I'm gonna plug it in and turn it on. See that it goes up and down. Now this one's a little bit louder, but it's nice how it goes up and down because it's not always putting the stress on the same part of the belt. And it actually kind of has like an orbital weight to it where it um, doesn't just sand in one direction, which is very nice. It's quicker and I think just more efficient overall. This machine actually has a vacuum port in the back, so if you do buy this, you know, it's an easy way to keep the dust down. It kind of falls in the belt, like it makes like a kind of like a wind tunnel type thing and it helps direct it in. So that feature is really nice. So let's get these all sanded. Alright, so that saves so much time and when you're looking at this, it's perfect on all four sides. And now the top isn't always perfect, so usually what you would do in this case is leave them a little bit long, but I actually got pretty precise and I can't complain, it's like a saw cut. But if you leave these, um, you know, half inch long or anything longer, you can just cut them to length afterwards, so which would be the 24 inches high. Um, so if you need to, you could do that right now, just cut them like a 16th of an inch to make them even. All right, so once this piece right here is dry, we're ready to put on the legs. Now, if you want to use the same doll pin method that we used before, go ahead and do it. And you can do it precise, or if you want to be a little rough, you can make it a little crooked, it's up to you. Now, they use that process in higher end furniture sometimes, so it's not a big deal if you're using that now. If you want to get things perfect, even these, you can make another jig and line them up perfectly and get these, instead of being this rough look, to have a very nice, uh, like, precise look if you want. But in this case, since we're just doing it rough, it doesn't really matter. But I'm here to show you a really cool jig, and this is the one that I'm going to be using. But if not, you can just use a regular drill bit, like I said before, in the Dolphins. So this right here is called the pocket hole screw jig. Now these put screws, um, basically that go from this side into the leg without you seeing them. So in this case, um, let's see. This will be the outside, so this will be the inside part. So we're going to put the screws um, going through this way. So in this case, I'm going to set it down on here and set this to the thickness of the wood, which is set to three quarters of an inch. Screw that in. And this is going to sit right there. Line it up where I want it, and then clamp this in. So now this whole piece right here is now clamped into this jig. So now you take the drill bit that it includes, and you drill in the holes. I usually go in and out a couple times just to make sure that it's a clean drill. Clean hole. And now we'll do the same thing on the bottom part. So now we'll take this out, and you'll see that we have those holes right there, which when we put the screw in, all we do is we line it up where we want it, drive the screw in, and you're not even going to see those because those are going to be underneath. So we'll do the same thing to this one. Alright, so now you have this, and this is going to screw right into the legs. It's the easiest method that's out there, I think. Now these tools. This one I think is a little bit pricey, but it's honestly worth every dollar they pay for it. So now we're going to add some glue on either end. Over there. Over right there. And we're going to get the corresponding screws, which I think we'll just use the inch and a quarter screws that it comes with. It comes with a, a good variety of screws, actually. And these are made to fit in their holes pretty well. I mean, you could use regular drywall screws, 
But these screws are pretty cheap and they're made to fit right, so why not just buy these? So now we're going to screw this in where we want it. Um, we're going to stay a half inch up, so let's grab something that's about a half inch thick to put underneath it so that it stays even when we screw it in. It's a half inch plug right here. So we'll put this underneath um, this side, but this one is going to stay on the board. So now we'll just line this up where we want it. And you want the thinner edge to be even with the top, as you see right here. So we're going to just pop a screw in there really quick. Get it started. Don't go in too much. Go in only as much as you need to make it tight. Same thing over here. And see how it tightens right up there. Now look at that, that's not going anywhere. These screws are so strong. And now we don't have to add a clamp there. We're ready to move on to the next step. We can do anything we want. This is not moving anywhere. This is so solid right now. So we're gonna do the same thing to this leg right here. Again, just put some glue on it. Use our little uh, jig thing that we set up here. And we'll put the leg here. Um, you notice where you glued them together, you could see that seam right there. So if you want them to both be even, you could do that. Um, but usually what I do is I make it so that the front side is visible with only the solid piece so you don't see the seam. So the seam is like on the right on the inside or on the left on the outside, which in most cases you're not going to see. So that's how I do that. So I'll do the same thing since we have the glue on there. This edge again is flush up there so that you have that little reveal right there. Three more of these screws and pop them in. We'll do the top one first since we want that to be flush. Pop that guy in and then we'll do these two. All right, and now you have one side piece. This is, I think just because the wood that I used, it already looks rustic and I'm very pleased with how this is coming out. Um, if you have a different type of wood or even a wood with not as many of this crazy stuff, which I think I was pretty lucky to find this piece of wood, then it's going to look a little bit different, but uh, the next steps that we're gonna do will make it look awesome. So I'm really satisfied with how this is coming out. So we'll do the same thing right here, and then we'll move to the next step. All right, so right now the project is almost done, as you can see. We have these side pieces right here that came out amazing. I'm really impressed with how these came out. And the last part with these is to basically put this right on here so that when we put the bottom base in, the, um, actually like the countertop part that we're putting in, whatever you wanna call it, the shelf, has something to sit on. So in this case, we want the top of it, which is going to be an inch thick, even with the top of this board right here. So we're gonna put this board down an inch. So measure an inch from the top part down, put some glue on this board, put it in place. And this one is actually the same width as these right here. So it's three quarters of an inch by three quarters of an inch. And that'll have just enough room to sit on here Depending on how far the legs are out though, you might want to make it a little bit bigger. But we are putting liquid nails, so it will adhere to it no matter what. So we'll do that to both of them. Just put a line of glue right across it. Have your marks on there, line up the marks. You don't have to clamp it, you just let it sit there overnight and that will dry fine. Center that right where we want it and we'll just lay that down. And the next part is basically going to be very fun. We're just going to take the sander, belt sander, whatever you have. I mean, you get hit with a hammer or something as long as you're gentle with the legs. And we're just going to like make dents in it and just go crazy and make it look rustic and kind of like beaten up. So that's a really fun part and it's something we're making fun sure you usually don't get to do because usually you want it to look nice, clean, crisp, just like the cabinet that I built with you guys. But this is something completely different. It's just, you use regular techniques, but you're not actually like going all the way perfecting them, which is a good way to kind of let you know like, what options are available out there, but also just show you the opportunities of basically like other ways to do things the same way. So we're going to do that, but I'm going to let this try a little bit longer um, before we guys. So now we're going to start to distress this. So what I did right here is I took my belt sander with 80 grit sandpaper and I went in all different directions. I went on the side like that, dug in like the front of it into there. And I basically took away the sharp edges, not everywhere, but in very, very many places. So as you can see on here, it doesn't look anything like it did before. 
It's really got that distressed look and that's exactly what we're going for. So we'll do this to the inside and the outside of both of them. Maybe put a little bit more concentration on the outside because that's what most people will see depending on what angle you have that. Uh, we'll do that to both and then we can throw some stain on here. So whatever stain you want, or if you don't want any stain, that's cool too. And then once we have those done and stained, we're going to put this countertop on that we made. All right, so the liquid nails are on here and these are drying. Um, a little technique is if you have a speed square is to set it on the concrete just like this. And then you can see that it has a 90 degree angle. In this case, you're making sure that these legs are straight. Um, it'll kind of mess up the way that you're looking at it eventually if it's not straight. So make sure to do that and put something in here to hold it just in case it doesn't move. Um, so you can set a piece of block at an angle, anything you need to make sure that it maintains a 90 degree angle. And then from there, what we're going to do is add some stain. I have a paintbrush I'll be using to apply this dark stain. You could also use an old t-shirt, um, basically an old rag, anything that you have. And if you don't want to use stain, you could just use a polyurethane that'll protect the wood and bring out like the knots and the grain a little bit more, but it also protects it and just have fun with it. If you want to paint it, you can do that too. So whatever finish or no finish you want. Basically the project's almost done. Once it dries, we're going to flip it over and add the other piece and then this will be all done. All right, so check it out. Now that we have the top glued on with the nails and also the bottom, and we put some stain on the sides. This thing is all done to be put in the house or wherever you want to put it. I hope you had a lot of fun making this project and I hope that yours turned out well. So make sure to share it with me. Follow me on Instagram at Copac Design. I'm also on Twitter at Andrew Copac. So tag me, send me photos, and let me know how your project turned out because I'm very excited to see. I'll try to upload videos at least every week, so make sure to check back soon for awesome projects all the time. If you have any tips or any advice or any questions, let me know because I'm here to learn from you guys and I hope that you learned a lot from me in this video. So until next time, stay busy, be safe, and have fun.